Hello from Los Angeles, everyone. I'm your host, Gia Nortas. You're watching TRT2. Welcome to the world of cinema. Today, our guest is Jeff Stockwell. Hi, Jeff. Hi. How are you? I'm good. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> Enjoying the rainy weather? Uh, you know, for if once? you're from Los Angeles, you learn to love the rain. We don't get much yeah. of it, so yeah. it's actually a special treat. So could you please tell us, how did you become a writer? What is your life's journey? Uh, it's interesting. I, I did not go to film school uh, or any of that. I actually studied English literature focused on poetry, strangely. Mm. I knew I wanted to be a writer, but I wasn't sure what kind of writer I'd be. So when I first got out of university, I was a school teacher. I was teaching uh, elementary school for several years, which got me really buried in the world of children, which turns out to be important later because a lot of the writing I do is about uh, mm. children. So I, I wanted to, I, I knew I'd like to make a living as a writer. Poets don't make much money. I always loved film. Uh, and I kind of discovered this weird parallel between poetry and film writing because poetry is about uh, compressing as much visual imagery as you can into the language. When you read a poem, you're often seeing what it's describing. Turns out that's pretty important for screenwriting as well. And then also poetry often a poem often has two meanings in it. You know, there's, you read one meaning, but you realize there's kind of an echo of other meanings, uh, mm -hmm. layers to it. And obviously great movies do that too. Mm -hmm. A scene is playing out and it seems like it's straightforwardly just an argument between two people, but you realize that there's other metaphors and things going mm -hmm. in it. So long story short, uh, I, I stopped teaching, I moved out here, of course, it's a very long journey to actually make a living as a screenwriter. I ended up working uh, as a reader, someone who read scripts mm -hmm. uh, at various different studios like Columbia and Fox Searchlight and Orion Pictures, and, uh, which is another lesson in learning about screenwriting because my job was to read all the scripts that were coming in. Yeah, it uh, must, be, uh, must be very uh, educating. It was because a lot of the scripts were good, a lot of them were bad, and I learned just as much from the bad ones as the good ones. Mm -hmm. All the while, I was going home at night and madly typing, and uh, and then eventually, I managed to uh, to make a sale and then have a, a film in production. Uh, so uh, it was a long journey for folks that are interested in becoming writers. I prepare you, you know, I want you to don't think it happens overnight. But if you keep if you keep at it, it does. Mm -hmm. You know, you find you find your handholds and then your footholds, and then suddenly you're working here. Size yolculuğumun hikayesini anlatacağım. Bu yolculuk gerçekten son derece tehlikeli. <gülüyor> Dünyayı değiştirebileceğime inanıyordum. Bunu yapmak zorundayım. Osmanlı İmparatorluğu'nun savaşa girmesi artık an meselesi. Hanımefendinin resmi muhafızı olacaksın. Bu tıpkı Tanrı'nın iradesini hissetmek gibi. Yolda bir talihsizlik yaşandı ama yine de kalmak istiyorum. Kalamazsın ama. Sana emrediyorum. Onları bırakacaksın. Korkmuyorum Doktor Woodruff. Benim dışında herkes aklını mı kaçırdı? Ermeni isyancılar şehir merkezini ele geçirdiler. Lakin kendini ispat etme vaktidir. <Gülüyor> Hepiniz tarih olduğunuzda biz burada olacağız. Well, it must feel really fulfilling to see your scripts becoming movies and it's it's great. I mean, I think most of us most writers, we're writers, right? I mean, right, so I'm not a director, I'm just a writer. And that's not an accident. I, I love the process of writing. I love owning the characters in the world. Sometimes I'm completely inventing those right out of you know, my own experience. And sometimes I'm working with, with books or ideas or that producers have brought to me. Uh, but, but for the writing time, uh, it's my world, I control it. 
And uh, so the funny thing is, uh, probably only about one tenth of the projects you work on get made into films. That's actually a good average. It might actually be one twentieth or yeah. one thirtieth. So uh, the thing is, if you don't enjoy, if you don't love writing the the ones that don't get made, yeah. you're going to be very, very frustrated. Yeah. Because, uh, so I've been writing now full time for 20 years or so, and I've got three or four or five films out there. Mm -hmm. But I've got uh, 40 or 50 or 60 scripts out, you know, in drawers or in hard drives in various places that haven't become films. Mm -hmm. I really loved the experience of writing each of those films. Mm -hmm. uh, but to your question, yeah, when they get made, it's, it's extremely exciting. It's fun to climb out of your office and, and go, and uh, many times I'll be on the set making adjustments during the production, uh, getting some, some feedback from actors who feel like the line doesn't need to be as, as wordy as it is, and those, it's really fun to make those changes mm -hmm. too. So that's a fun part of the process mm -hmm. as well. Hmm. Well, I, I guess today's world is kind of feels a little bit smaller because of all the digital platforms, social mm -hmm. networks, and so on and so forth. Does that somehow help you as a writer in your creative process? It's it, well, you know, one one thing I've really noticed with it is how much how much how interesting it's making the teaching mm -hmm. uh, work I do because when I'm uh, when I'm let's say in Morocco uh, or in Egypt, I realize that it's really possible for people globally to see the films that the filmmakers I'm working with you know, are working on and, and hoping to make, even if they're short films. So if you think just 30 years ago how extremely difficult it would be for a, an American teenager to see uh, a film like Mustang, mm -hmm. um, a Turkish film that came out uh, uh, last year. Was it, was it the year before or last year? I think it was a last year. A couple years ago. And, um, and you know that just wouldn't you know you might it might come to your city for a moment and you could run out and see it but then it would sort of disappear you'd have to chase it down through some mm -hmm. film club or something and now I don't know what the numbers are but hundreds of thousands of of, of people are seeing it. Mm -hmm. um, but um, what I really love about this whole thing is how um, and I'd like to hear your perspective on that how that helps cultures to kind of integrate with each other. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, I have. I have kind of a highfalutin ideas about that. I have to say that the reason I got into this is very much almost a, uh, I don't want to say spiritual, but a kind of a calling that, that believes that stories are one of the most important ways that we learn about each other, mm -hmm. uh, whether that's uh, two people within the same culture, whether that's completely different cultures. My understanding of the, of the world and other cultures is so deeply informed by, by the novels and films uh, and documentaries uh, and songs mm -hmm. that I have from those other cultures. So that's extremely exciting to me. I mean, uh, I would, uh, I really hope that anything that I work on, and obviously I'm writing in English, but uh, you know, finds its way with whatever whatever meaning and message it has to as many cultures as possible, and gives them an understanding. Of the experience that that you know that I'm exploring, um, and then and then the big thing, will, of course, will be uh, it's a little as an American, you you know you can you feel a little bit like yeah, our stuff is getting out there, people are seeing it. I, I wrote a film called Bridge to Terabithia ten years ago or so, and as I've traveled to teach, I'm a little amazed how many people how many people in different countries in different languages grew up with that film. It's a Disney film, and Disney's a powerful company that gets it out there. But grew up and it made, it, it made an impact on them. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. the, the question is, will the films made in other cultures start to Integrate move their in, way through in, into, yeah. into Western Europe and into, into um, America, Australia? Will they start to readily embrace uh, those kinds of films? Mm -hmm. And I. I think that's, that'll be exciting to see if, if mm -hmm. that takes place. It is much more than it was. A kid now is, is a, a kid that's grown up now is, is very likely to have uh, experienced Miyazaki, you know, as opposed to just pure Disney. Um, and so there's things that are changing that way. And, uh, and I hope that keeps, 
being the case. It's always a little bit of the issue of language and will, who will read subtitles or how do you, is there a whole system of, of good dubbing mm -hmm. in, but I think it's gonna come. Karanlığı yenmenin tek yolu ışığa dönüşmek. Sevgim her zaman orada. Onu göremesen bile. For people who actually grew up outside of the U.S., mm -hmm. like myself, for example, we are used to um, dubbing. Yeah. We, we don't, in those countries, we're kind of like completely okay with watching a movie with dubbing yeah. or subtitles. Yeah. No, I think that's right. And dubbing, it's funny, if you go to like uh, Germany, there's, there's like actors that have played Tom Cruise's voice for exactly. 20 years. and. You know, so he, the, that person is the voice of Tom Cruise. Exactly. It would be really fun to do a movie about someone like that, who's yeah, yeah, the yeah. voice of Tom Cruise in Germany. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, and I think, you know, we all laugh. At, so when I grew up, we had some like, uh, some you know, Japanese Godzilla level stuff that would come over and be dubbed really badly. So there's kind of a feeling, you know, where the mouth isn't linked up yeah, with, yeah. The, with the words, but well, obviously, that's going to grow much more sophisticated. Yeah, too. and the times um, are changing. But how how were you introduced to Turkish culture? How did you come to that market? Well, it, it kind of connects to what uh, we were just talking about. Um, I was uh, uh, sent a project that was about an American nurse falling in love with a, a, a Turkish officer um, during World War One, and. Um, it was just just an idea, something people wanted to explore, and uh, and I and I thought I I had actually been kind of getting I read the newspaper a lot. I, I was getting kind of wrapped up in the tensions that were building between the Muslim and the Christian world. So, in a quasi idealistic way, I thought, oh, well, it would be kind of fun to explore that kind of Romeo and Juliet mm -hmm. love story. There's so uh, actually Muslim Christian romance in contemporary America is not. Super common, you know. I have a few. I, know, I have a few friends and couples that, are, but it's not, it's not widely common yet. And so I just felt like any any stories that can start to explore how two young people would cross the uh, the many boundaries that would be laid out for that, particularly in you know a hundred years ago, right. um, would be fun to play with. Um, so that ended up with me doing uh, quite a bit of research on uh, American missionaries, and then uh, eventually the, the producers um, said, you know, "Come to Turkey, come to Turkey, and uh, and do some research here." Uh, so I ended up spending a month in Turkey. Uh, I spent uh, several days in Van, in the east, and then uh, about two or three weeks. Uh, using libraries and things in uh, Istanbul as well as, I have to say actually a lot of my research was just getting to understand the rhythm of Turkish life. Really silly stuff that writers are always paying course, attention yeah. to. Just like how many cats there were. Mm -hmm. Or, um, mm -hmm. well, Istanbul is a, is a pretty mesmerizing city. It's an so, amazing city, so I love it. Yeah. I kept asking to stay longer uh, uh, because I just really enjoyed working there. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and it was really a good rhythm for a writer to, to uh, spend time reading, you know, head, head into some of the libraries, and then also just walk the markets and, and the mosques. And uh, quite a few, I really fell in love with a little mosque there called Rustam Pasha, which is right in the middle of um, uh, 
the market in around Emenu. Is, am I pronouncing the regions right? Excuse my pronunciation in Turkish places. But anyway, it's, got, it's a smaller mosque with some really beautiful, beautiful tile work. So the joy was uh, thinking that that would be, an, that, that was kind of a neat space for the, from the characters to, to meet. It, it, the place did something special to me when I went in there. Um, and one of the pleasures of, of working uh, in Turkey was that that they ended up actually using that location. Yeah. But did that culture impact you somehow? Yeah, I was I was intrigued by the whole uh, the whole process of expression and creativity. Mostly mostly uh, excited by how excited the, the Turkish people I was working with were to tell stories and and make films and, and get things going. The energy was uh, amazing. While traveling in Turkey, while working there, have you discovered any interesting stories that you think could be um, amazing for the world to see? Yeah, well, it, you know, the great thing is is that human behavior is is universal, and so of course there's um, there's all kinds of opportunities to find stories there that uh, even as they're taking place in Turkey have unbelievable meaning, you know, meaning uh, around the world and, and for an American audience. And it's often, you know, it's often little things. It can be, I think any, any, any for me, let's say there's a guy named Pierre Loti, for instance. Mm -hmm. He's a very odd character. I don't know if you, he has like a little, uh, he, he was a, a Frenchman that had a fascination with Istanbul. Um, and if you wanted to do a comedy about a, a Pierre Loti scholar who comes to Istanbul trying to do the kind of orientalist thing that he was doing, only to find that he's completely out of sync with what's going on there now. Mm -hmm. I, you know, ideas are always bubbling mm -hmm. for me uh, as I as I move through there. Um, the cats. There was a wonderful documentary um, last year. I, I'm sorry, but my time is such a weird flow for me. But it's called, I think it's called Katie, K whatever the Turkish word for cat is. Um, I'm sure some of the audience has seen it. It's a documentary about cats in Istanbul. But that, even before I saw that documentary, that caught my attention. Is there is there like a really great uh, animated film about the world of cats uh, in Istanbul? Um, there's other stories. There's stories about the guy who um, who tried to fly off of the uh, off of the tower there uh, in Istanbul um, and. Uh, one of the first people to you know sort of explore flight. I think actually some Turkish productions have have played with some of this great history, but but has someone come to it yet with a you know with a way that would would branch it out? So there's there's endless stories. There's obviously some you know super complex stories that to be explore, um, you know some really important stories to explore. But I think there's a lot of also just lovely, lovely um, you know sort of life moment stories mm -hmm. that you could play out as well. Mm -hmm. So. I don't know. I, I would love to set something. I'd love to set something in Istanbul, um, just as another excuse <laughs> to get back to there. have really yeah. good Turkish food. Right there. <laughs> maybe, you know, maybe you know. There's all those French films that are always about chefs and food and two chefs arguing or someone coming to work in it. Yeah, maybe it's time to do a movie about an American uh, American executive who comes to Istanbul and, do, and, and is trying to bring fast American food and discovers. Uh, the joys of, oh, yeah. of the Turkish cuisine. Um, now you're making me hungry. Yeah, I'm trying to give everybody <laughs> ideas too. You can steal any of these ideas, please. They're not copyrighted. Uh, well, Jeff, thank you so much yeah. for your time. It's been a fascinating conversation. Yeah, I've enjoyed thank it too. You. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for watching The World of Cinema. We'll be back next week on TRT2.